Sorry, Gage. I, <laughs> I sent the invite to Gage Go. <laughs> oh, I got you. You're all so, good. So I'm like, ah, seven minutes. I'm like, Where, where's he at? And I'm like, right. oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> all good. I just guys a tough time spelling, so. Yeah, I'm illiterate. <laughs> <laughs> my brain, my brain is tiny, tiny. He has a big tennis game, but his brain is tiny, tiny. We're all good. I yeah, live with Tyler, so I go over these things. Okay, daily. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we welcome uh, to backyard tennis. We got Gage Goal and Tyler Hadorf, a recent, super, super recent national championship uh, for doubles for the Division Three men's tennis tournament. I yeah. mean, fellas, how are we feeling? Tyler, take it away. We're, I'm feeling awesome. I'm feeling great. We won like about 24 hours ago. So I don't think the, the real feeling is set in yet, but I don't know. It's, it's been pretty surreal for the last 24 hours with, you know, phone calls, text messages and all the, you know, congratulations from so many people. And yeah, it's been, it's been unreal experience so far. Well, and you know, especially like obviously an incredible moment, an incredible experience. You fellas were unseated. Um, you do not have a one seed, a two seed, a three seed, or a four seed. I think you guys were technically what? What were you like? Number seven in the country at the time? I think so. Yeah. Um, but I mean, just what are your initial reactions as you reflect upon this tournament? And also, I want to ask: Are we your first uh, media appearance? Media appearance. <laughs> you guys are definitely the debut for us. That's for let's sure. Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> Definitely some brownie points going to you guys. Yeah, but cool. um, it was kind of crazy. I mean, seeds are kind of cool going into the tourney. But at this point in the year, every team is like the best team in the country, obviously. And every team can beat every team on any given day. And so it's pretty much when you get to this point, whichever teams play better is going to win, which is why there were so many upsets in the tournament, why we were able to get so far. But uh, at the same time, we were two points away from losing in the first round and we were down a break uh, midway through the third set and could have been down and out right there uh, in the round of 16. So I think this tournament uh, is anyone's, anyone's trophy to get. And we were just pretty fortunate to. And I would love to hear. Uh, so you guys were playing down in, was it Oklahoma? The national it was, it was St. Louis. Louis. St. Louis. 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 So playing down in St. Louis is that is the tournament there every single year? Uh, last year was in there. Orlando, okay, um, which was kind of sweet because it was at the national campus. But I know, I know the facility is obviously awesome, but there's always a little bit of backlash when it's like 110 degrees and guys are playing for 10 straight days out there in the heat. Um, so I think it was good to have it in St. Louis, where it was a little more mild, and the facility there was obviously incredible too. So, and. Part of the doubles bracket, how many teams are competing? Um, so if you guys were the seventh uh, ranked team in the nation, mm -hmm. and they and you guys were unseated in that tournament, so they don't they only seat up to four. Or? Yeah, they go ahead, Tyler, if you got it. Oh yeah, they just they just seat up to four. So everybody besides the top four of sixteen teams that are there is just randomly uh, selected for their spot in the bracket. Okay, so we got. We were probably the the around that five through seven seed if they would have seeded that. So we kind of drew an unlucky draw with playing the four seed first round, which was just by chance. And well, as you can see from the score, that was a pretty pretty close match there. I think the the ad side guy was Gage and I were talking about the the best player we played all all weekend. I don't think he missed a return in I don't know the two hour match we had. So, yeah, it's all kind of luck of the draw if you're not seated. And luckily, we, we we got lucky quite a few times and got the job done. Yeah, I mean, I, well, I would argue that luck comes with talent. Um, both of you are, you know, you're young. Uh, this It's not like this was your senior year uh, at Gustavus. What was the approach uh, going in once, obviously, you find out you make the tournament um, and, you know, you see the draws and you're like, you know, for lack of a better term, damn, we've got the four seed. Uh, what was the approach? I think, I think going into the tournament, even going back a few weeks, uh, and kind of a struggle Tyler and I have had all year is just getting healthy. And, uh, just a month and a half ago, I went through 
a crazy ankle injury um, and was not even supposed to be on court uh, at this point in the year. And so a lot of the focus for me was just being able to get on court uh, and have the chance to play with Tyler. Um, But then in the past week or so, they don't release the draw until you are already there, like less than 24 hours before your first round match. And I think that's to avoid people kind of pulling out of the draw at the last second, if they draw top seed or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But um, it's really just, get your game ready, get your body ready, and then be ready to roll uh, for the first round. But there's really no scouting or anything that you can do before getting to the tourney, which is kind of unique. Were how, so you said you were injured before, before the tournament. What, if you were to say you're at a hundred percent, 80%, 70%, what, what, uh, where do you think you were at? I, by the time the tourney started, I was pretty dang close to a hundred percent. I, I went Uh, through this wild rehab plan (laughs) uh, the first or the like the three, four weeks prior to the tourney starting uh, to get me in a position to play. But um, by the time the tourney started, I was ready to roll. And even if I wasn't, I definitely wouldn't let Tyler know uh, because he has enough to worry about between him and I. Mm. Uh, One one thing that I noticed in that championship match, which – Thank you, uh, Jeffrey, for sending that to me. Uh, also, was... shout out Jeffrey. He was here. He's in my house right now. <laughs> was Tell Jiggy I say hi. The energy that you Jeffrey guys Definitely say hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, one thing that I noticed in the championship match was the energy between you guys and how you guys got yourselves hyped up. I noticed that you guys would high five in between points, like – 10 times you just like high five you talk a little bit high five again in the middle and you just like keep on doing that um do you think you guys have some sort of like a i don't know special bond or something going on that you're just like in sync or (laughs) well i i would i would say this i mean in practice surprisingly it doesn't you know usually work work like that usually the high fives aren't as present in practice but Seeming like uh, whenever we come and match big matches, um, we both are just so like into it and so intense and having so much fun that, you know, when we're talking, it's just become a natural instinct to just, I mean, every three words is usually another high five. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's just a, a way for us to, to I mean, stay in, a, to stay in the zone and keeping that, you know, positive energy between us. I think that gave us a little bit of an edge, especially in the Denison match. Uh, if you would have... We saw them, they were kind of going at it with their coach and at each other a little bit, which didn't help their, you know, style of play. And that ended up being like the sort of the easiest match, if you would call it that, uh, that we had. So I don't know. I think all the all the little things matter. And even if it's, you know, 10, 12, 15 high fives in between a point, I think the positive energy helps us helps us in those situations. Well, and I would argue too, um, fast forwarding to the final. Uh, you talk about the little things, Tyler. Um, there were a couple of calls that did not go your guys' way in the first couple of sets, um, which, by the way, may have been the quickest first two sets of a three-set match that I've ever seen <laughs> in a high-profile match. Um, the late Socrates once said, karma is a bitch. Um, <laughs> but, you know, in those moments, do you think that maybe you got hooked or, you know, there was a call that was overruled that didn't go your way? Um, I know that Gustavus and that you guys are big on, you know, focusing what on what is it within your control. How do you respond to those uh, instances and situations where something didn't go your way? Yeah, um, I can take this one since I was the one who was overruled. Um, <laughs> so I'm the hook in this scenario. But um, yeah, we had a couple we had a couple points throughout the match that we felt like we kind of got screwed a little bit, but. Um, they both happened to come like in two out of three points and a huge game in the second set when we were about to break. And um, obviously emotions are high. And I called the second serve out that I thought was out and the line judge obviously thought otherwise. Um, And then just two points later, I thought I hit a return winner and that was also called out, but what are you going to do? I mean, we ultimately got to a deuce point, uh, just the point after that. And so with all that going wrong, we still had a break opportunity and 
yes, I do think that ultimately what goes around comes around and we ended up breaking that game anyways. And um, as much as we like to think we know that we're right, chances are we could be equally as wrong. Um, And so there's a very good chance that I did just hook the guy on a second serve. And there's also a very good chance that my return winner that I thought was a winner was a couple inches out and I'm just not going to know, but ultimately it's the line um, between winning and losing is thin. And some of those points are huge, but also uh, one point doesn't determine the outcome of the match. So and in Gage's defense as well, uh, he did come up to us after the match, what, our opponent who hit the serve, and he, he did say he came up to us right after we won. He was like, oh, by the way, that serve you called out that w- was overruled, I thought it was out as well. So we weren't as mad with the with the call, with the return. It was more of getting overruled on that. And I thought it was out as well. I think everyone on the court thought that one serve was out and it got overruled and that, you know, was frustrating because it's not even, you know, one of the players on the court making, you know, you know, harder for one of the teams to win, but you know, Hey, it's college tennis and with line judges and opponents, it's, I mean, stuff will happen. And they were very yeah. respectful throughout the, throughout the whole match. So. Yeah. Well, it was, fu- it was really fun to watch between, you know, you guys and your opponents from Sewanee, the college of the South, uh, you know, I think there was very much a competitive spirit in the air and uh, the broad, obviously you guys weren't watching because you were playing. Um, but the uh, analyst was talking about how this was the first time that Gustavus has won a doubles title since 2003. Now, was that the year of Buderak and Kevin Whipple? I believe so. Yeah. I and and so was. that was the year for our viewers who don't know, our millions of viewers, um, where essentially, from my understanding, uh, those two, Kevin Whipple and, <coughs> and Eric Buderak, who went on to play on the ATP Tour and was a very successful doubles player, um, were slated to play in the singles final. Um, and, you know, obviously two teammates tried to get it rescheduled, weren't able to. And so Whipple said, hey, I want to save our energy for doubles. Um, I'm going to default. Buderak, uh, you're the national champion for singles. Let's go play great doubles. Uh, and they won that. Um, it, you know, when it comes to the legacy of this program at Gustavus, um, on the court, obviously, regionally, uh, there is a big reputation and a really like, I mean, when's the last time Gustavus lost a conference championship? I couldn't tell you the year, but it's been a while, a hot second, <laughs> but the character, uh, that you guys play with and that you're surrounded with every day. Um, what can you say about that? Yeah, I think uh, I think Tvel does a great job with you know understanding our philosophies and the the bigger the bigger moments and the bigger motives behind our the way we play and just with the wins and losses that we receive. I mean, with the three crowns and the serenity prayer, I think he does a great job of just, I mean, getting the reputation of no matter what, win or lose, we're going to have that good good sportsmanship. We're going to be respectful and we're going to you know give our full effort to represent Gustavus as well as possible. I think just honing in on the details there that, you know, you're representing the team, the, the, the college and everything, you know, all the people that are involved with it. I think just overall highlighting that you're representing a lot of people helps people, you know, helps us all uh, focus on being respectful and playing to the best of our ability. And that helps it, Gustavus, get, Gustavus get the reputation it has all over. Well, I would certainly agree as a uh, former admission counselor of the school. Uh, (laughs) But, uh, you know, I want to ask you guys as well as a follow-up. On the live stream, uh, after you guys won, you shook hands. um, You're celebrating. Tommy comes up and the three of you embrace um, for a hot second. And, uh, you know, I was watching with uh, my brother, your guys' former teammate, Jeffrey. uh, And... uh, I don't know, man. Somebody must have cut some onions in the room. Um, but what was that moment like? Yeah, it was it was crazy. I mean, Tyler and I have gone through gone through a lot on our own. We're we're roommates, we're best friends, we're dubs partners, so we we get plenty of each other to say the least. Um, um, and even on the court, kind of relating to your last question too, uh, just knowing. I mean, 
Tommy said several times throughout the weekend that whether or not we had won or lost round one, two, three, or four, uh, he and everyone else would have been equally as proud of us um, for what we've done and what we've done to get here. And I think just knowing all those people that embrace you as competitors and friends and teammates and family, uh, regardless of the win or the loss is just so reassuring. And then I think after we got that done, it just kind of all came together and hit us at once that like, Holy smokes, we did this. And we had all these people behind us who believed in us and all these different things we did to get here. Um, and so I think that all just tied together in that moment. And Tommy's really good at helping us to recognize that, that it's a lot just bigger or it's a lot bigger than just a win in the finals of a tournament. Cause truthfully, Tyler and I have won all sorts of tournaments, but this one, given the, given the circumstances and given the, the, grand scheme of things is obviously so much more meaningful. Yeah. <clears throat> um, a couple of situations. So in the, in the last match championship match, you guys went down, a, down the first set. I think you guys lost six, two in the first set. How are you guys? feeling? About, <laughs> yeah, how, are you, <laughs> how are you feeling after that set? Was it, was it a little bit of helplessness or what were you feeling in that moment? I think I could take this one. So if you watch the first set, I don't think I served to the to the best of my ability as I got broke both my service games and that. Um, so th that was a that was a little bit down. I was definitely a little bit down and felt a little you know felt like I, I was letting down both Gage and you know all the people watching after the you know couple poor service games there. And I don't know, Gage and Tvel really helped me. Gage said, "All right, he wants to serve the second set," and you know. Took a little break, and we just we just decided between the two of us that no matter what, we're going to go out there with um, even more energy than we usually have, which is usually a lot. So we're just going to give it our all for energy, and I mean, whatever happens after that happens, and we're just going to enjoy every second out there. But yeah, after the first set, I uh, I'd be lying if I said I thought we were going to turn things around. <laughs> yeah, and then. In the last set, the third set, I believe it was 3-3 three, three or – yeah, I think it was 3-3, three, three and maybe you guys got the break at that point. Mm -hmm. um, when you're so close to finishing a match, what what's the feeling there? Is that like, hey, we got this – like, we got this in the bag? Like, now, <laughs> now we're going to be super, super nervous. Like, emotions are super high because, I mean, at that point – and I'm glad you guys didn't, but – you, you choke it away. Like if you're up a break two two games left, the nerves are going to be a bit more heightened. What, what was, what was uh, the feeling there? Yeah, I think, I think it was good that we had a few trials like this in the earlier rounds yeah. <laughs> um, because we were definitely a lot more prepared in the championship. Um, in the first round, we were up five, four and Tyler was serving it out and we, we lost service that game. We got broke and, obviously ended up going to the breaker. So that could have been known as the choke. I think in the second round, we were up a break and maybe the second or third set. And then we let that one go too. And I, so I think knowing that we were still able to get it done, even if we let, let a break go or we get broken, uh, that's ultimately not going to cost us the match. There's still a lot of tennis to be played. Mm -hmm. So I think that allowed us, uh, from 3-3 or 4-3 on when we got that break to just know that like the match isn't over if we get broken or we can still absolutely pull this out even if even if we don't win every single point the rest of the way I think allows you to be a little bit more free True. and I think Tyler didn't even drop a point on his 4-3 service game uh, to get us to 5-3 and we were just cruising along so I think definitely the trials in the first couple rounds um and failure truthfully allow you to be a little bit more free in the big moments. Yeah. So in that moment, did you feel nerves? Um, yeah, I'm going to, or maybe, gonna, oh, sorry. or maybe even that in that last service game too, or like, are you feeling nerves or are you kind of in the flow state where you're just like, no, you're in the zone and you, and it doesn't really bother you. You're just like in it, you know? I'm going to probably say a different answer than Gage here um, because Gage in the last, in the last, 
game. I was, you know, doing my normal thing, giving him 12 high fives, saying, like, let's keep moving the feet. Let's keep the energy up. And I, I recall him just not breaking eye contact with me and just gives me, not saying a word and just gives me one head nod in between points. He's just, he was just fully locked and not feeling any pressure. I, on the other hand, even though I held pretty easily on my service game, I was, I was terrified. <laughs> I was feeling the nerves a lot. And it was, I was lucky to, uh, I mean, Gage just running up there with the energy was super helpful, but I was on that four three game, especially because this was one of the one of the matches where I struggled with serving the most. I was feeling a lot of pressure, and luckily we got some er- early uh, service errors off of them. And yeah, I just kept trying to bounce around and not not think too much. Yeah, I was yeah. Uh, I was telling a few other guys about this. They were asking. I mean, Tyler serves way harder than I do, and uh to the eye it looks a lot harder to return than mine and a lot of people ask like how do I get so many errors off my serve and I think that starts even before I hit the serve with the maniac that's crouched at the net uh in front of me and I think knowing that I have Tyler at the net who is going to put away nearly everything that he can get his racket on uh is very relieving when I'm stepping up to serve, Mm. just knowing that if I can get a decent serve in the box, Tyler's going to be able to cause chaos up there. And so that that's all I was thinking about in that five, four service game was just basically get it in the box and don't just loop it in there and let Tyler handle the rest. And sure enough, he had, I think at least two put aways and maybe two service errors uh, in that service game to get that last game. Were were you were you guys able to watch the match back yet? Have you watched it back, or have you just kind of been soaking in the moment? I haven't watched it back yet. No, I I, I heard you can somewhere, or there's a video of it somewhere. I haven't looked into it yet. I've been <laughs> I've been just soaking it in. Yeah, I kind of skimmed over it late last night just to try to relive it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, Let's it's uh, it's worth watching. Um, <laughs> I would say it's uh, – it's speaking on behalf of uh, myself and uh, my folks, my mother. You guys have met my mama, Missy. Uh, sweet angel. Uh, sweet not chef. Just about, what what'd you say? Sweet chef. Sweet oh, girl. dude. Missy with the monster cookies, dude. Unbelievable. Unbelievable <laughs> talent. Um, but even her who isn't like – you know, she played tennis but not tennis background. But like her, you know, from her to like, you know – Myself, Jeffrey, and my dad, who come from a tennis background, like you guys played just very principled doubles. Um, and it's, you know, as Bruce Gullickson would say, there's a party at the net. Um, <laughs> and you guys absolutely partied at the net. Mm. Yeah, that's been, uh, that's been kind of drilled into, into me because I've always been a maniac at the net. But I think a big thing this year was T Val was just trying to let me be a maniac at the net, but just, move me to the right position so I'm not just being a complete chaos up there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, so when I, one thing that I noticed uh, watching watching the match live was it seemed like the announcer was was on the opponent's... It's a uh, Suwannee guy. <laughs> he he might have been uh, home, homegrown. Uh, Song in, in the South, baby. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we are channel for the people i'm a man of the man of the people david is a man of the people um so we have to relay on any any messages and of course we're going to make sure that they remain anonymous of course but um yeah we got a message saying this announcer is given uh giving c1e the gluck gluck 3000 it's It's pronounced sawani sawani whatever whatever that's not the point that's not the point great school we can disrespect the so Sawani name because um, Gustavus won the championship. So, but anyways, back to the point. Um, what uh, knowing that the announcer was was against was against you does that does that feel the fire that uh, from within that you guys uh, got it done and you proved the haters wrong? I think kind of going in as to. Absolute. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it was two nobodies that were kind of in the final from Minnesota. 
And everyone's probably thinking, like, what the heck are these two doing here? Um, <laughs> we got a guy who didn't play in the singles lineup last year. We got a guy who wasn't in the lineup either last year. We got a guy from Sioux oh. Falls, South Dakota. Yeah, we got a dude from Burnsville. We got a dude from South Dakota who rides Buffalo to school in the <laughs> national championship. Like, I think it was good to kind of put our names on the map a little bit, to let's say go. the least. But let's go. <laughs> it was a good time for sure. Yeah. So I got, I got to ask you, Gage, how does it feel to be from the lesser of the Dakotas? Obviously, great accomplishment <laughs> for you and Tyler, but, I mean, South Dakota, man, what a thought. Oh, I mean, yes, you've got casinos and gas stations. You've got the Black Hills, Mount Rushmore, but, I mean, man, what a tough life. You're telling me everything we got, and it's already more than anything I know is in North Dakota. <laughs> oh, Don't now you it. shut your mouth. We've got uh, – the Red River is great for fishing. Um, we've got a – uh, a fine lutefisk scene. Uh, have you ever had lutefisk? I can't say I have. Oh, Probably a just a North Dakota fish. thing. Yeah. Uh, you, you're always welcome up here. At the, both of you are always welcome up at the Young's I house. Think, I think you're figuring, I think you're forgetting the bit, the best part in North Dakota. Yeah. What would that be, Tyler? Uh, that'd be Miss, Missy Young's cooking right there. That's in North Dakota. Wow. Um, some Good days uh, or some nights, I should say, I wake up at two in the morning to what is that noise? And it's Missy scheming in the kitchen, man. She <laughs> she's going to town. She's like Bobby Flay, except like she hasn't cut people because she loves everybody. She she's beautiful. Yeah, shout out, uh, good stuff by Missy. But shout out to the Fargo tournament too in the summer. That is yeah. a good one. Are you guys yeah. coming up this year? We will of be course. there. Of Let's course. go. Yeah. Let's go. Red River Valley Fair, same weekend. So if you're country music boys, we got some concert tickets for you. There we go. Tyler's <laughs> time. <laughs> and, and if you guys happen to be up in Fargo, maybe visiting Jeffrey or something like that, I'm always down for a match. I'm, out, I'm trying, to, trying to play some people on camera a little bit more. And, mm. and I've just been playing a bunch of dusty uh, – <laughs> yeah, Scrum, guys, you maybe were good at one time, and who beat you at one time? Hey. Handily. What, what's in the past is the past. So, <laughs> but, but Gage and Tyler, I want to ask you. So you may notice in my bio, I did beat a French Open, uh, French Open champion, as did Isaac. Have you guys beat a French Open champion before? <laughs> <laughs> we have not. I would, I would like to say two things. Number one. I have never lost to Max Exted, <laughs> if you guys are aware of who that is. Oh, oh we are, yes. Yes. And number two, it has been an ongoing debate that Tyler and I would be able to beat Carlos Alcarez two-on-one <laughs> in a doubles match. Let's and go. so our request for when Alcarez sees this is to play us whatever surface, whatever country – Whatever continent he wants. Preferably not on clay. Clay would might be a little bit harder, but <laughs> whatever <laughs> continent. <laughs> maybe too young to remember carpet, but let's let's get you two versus him on carpet. He's a close yes. friend of the program, um, right. so we'll make it happen. Okay. Yeah. That, Who was the you, French Open you. champ? Can I ask? Uh, Luke Jensen. Uh, okay. He it was doubles. Mm -hmm. um, so long story short, uh, are you guys familiar with Luke Jensen? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Murphy Jensen. Watch tennis channel growing up. So Luke, Luke and Murphy won the French open in 1993. Um, okay. And Luke was, I don't know if he still is, but he was the longtime head uh, women's coach at Syracuse. Um, and very much like a, you know, leading figure in American coaching for college tennis. And he was basically doing a bunch of camps around the country um, and then followed by pro am. So he'd go to like the cities, uh, do like a couple clinics. And then he'd play like a pro am against like, I don't know, like, um, get Mahanad up there. I don't know if they actually play, but like good players. Um, and at the time, this was my freshman year, Isaac's junior year of college at Concordia. Um, we did have the best record for one doubles in the Mayak at the time. Uh, oh, we did beat Gustavo. No we don't need to mention if it was like the A squad or the B squad, but we did beat them. Um, <laughs> and so. Yeah, we squared up against him and a uh, wonderful woman who was uh, played for Yale and had WTA points. Annie wow. Sullivan. Yeah, Annie Sullivan. She was stellar. Great player. Um, and we did win uh, in three. 
Uh, we probably would have won in straights if we didn't eat like between the two of us, probably like, you know, three burritos combined. Um, like the beautiful thing was with that match, fellas, was like, you know, there weren't any nerves because we were so we were so nervous about like throwing up or like shitting our pants on the court um, <laughs> that like we could actually just play loose tennis. There you go. Yeah. So we'll get Carlito scheduled. Uh, you boys come up. Isaac and I will train. We'll play you. Um, we'll see how it goes. I think we'll have to do a, a step-by-step process. We'll have to play, you know, you, you guys first and the previous, you know, the Jansen there, and then we'll get to Car- Carlito there. Yep. Yep. I think that's <laughs> probably the uh, trajectory that we're looking at. Um, but, yeah, I, I guess I have a question for you guys, obviously. So, Gage, <laughs> you're a so – you're going to be a junior next year, correct? Yes. And Tyler, you're going to be a sophomore. I'm going to be a junior as well. You're going to be a junior as well. That's right. You guys are the same age. You're roommates. What's next? That's a good question. <laughs> I... Well, to start off for the for the summer, we got the we got the summer circuit. Shout out Fargo, Sioux Falls, uh, Champlin Park, and Rapid. Right, Gage? Is that That's the right. Play? Run it. So we got we got a little we got a little summer circuit going here, and then. Well, we'll see. I think the the biggest thing is we might not have a specific goal we're trying to reach right now, but I mean, keep putting the work to keep get better every day, and we'll we'll see if we can get a, another another title or something in the fall, or you know maybe maybe something bigger and better after that. So just keep putting the work is the is the next step for us. Yeah, I know that there's a little bit of a bitter taste in our mouths from the end of the team season that we had as well losing to the rivals four or five in the in the regional tourney to whitewater um and i think we definitely could make some contributions to changing that outcome in our singles game uh moving forward in the next year or so uh, to hopefully turn that around and uh, help the team a little bit in that aspect as well so it's kind of hard to think about anything but dubs right now given the situation but uh there's no doubt that we will also be uh, grinding on the singles court as well to hopefully improve uh, our chances for next year for the team as well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, gents, for coming on. I look forward to seeing you guys and hopefully playing a little bit this summer. Uh, But yeah, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks for having us guys. It's a great day to be a gusty.